Is it possible that the principle of Darwin's theory or assumed Darwinism, evolution by means of natural selection, can coexist with creationism? What if Adam and Eve evolved into what we are today? Of course, everyone, uh, all believers agree that Adam and Eve evolved into what we are today, right? We're all children of Adam and Eve, and obviously there has been some evolution within the human race from Adam and Eve to us now. Uh, we don't know the precise um, measures that they, that they were. Some hadith mentions some spectacular height for Adam alayhi salam, but that just goes to show that uh, even on a very traditional and classical view uh, of Islam, they, uh, there has been some evolution within the human race. They have said that human beings have continued to become uh, shorter in stature o over time. And of course we can see that there's a diversity of races. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that from a man and woman, He has made you into many different nations and tribes that you should know each other. So if you look around at the very many nations and tribes, obviously there have been some evolution and some differentiation uh, between uh, peoples. Uh, so not everyone is an exact copy of our original parents, uh, Adam uh, and, and Eve. Uh, but uh, the, the, the theory of, of natural selection as put forward by Darwin uh, it, it has two elements. One is the element of observing the changes that do occur. And two, it is a naturalistic presupposition which excludes God from the whole picture and, and, and accounts for everything without God. So first, the observation. Yes, we can see that things do evolve and change. But that does not require us to say that things change on their own and that the universe works by itself. As if the, the universe is a big wind-up clock, somebody wound it up and left it to run, and it's just running on its own without any sort of intervention or involvement by whoever wound up this clock in the first place. The universe seems to work, uh, at least as we believe, by the direct supervision and continuous uh, con control uh, of God Almighty. Uh, as if we might think of, uh, let, let's say we think of, uh, of a computer animated uh, a movie. Mm -hmm. Computer animated movie uh, is obviously a series of images uh, generated by computer and usually it is all produced and, and, uh, and put together and you just hit play and the images flow one after another and you get the uh, impression of continuous movement. Uh, but what if the graphic artist is there uh, giving you one frame right after another and he's doing it live in real time. So you see one screen image, and he's working on the next one. And it's entirely up to him what he wants to do with the next one. He's in full control, and he can change whatever he wants. So if our moment now is as it is, before we blink the next eye, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in full control, and he determines what the next moment is going to be. And in real time, he is continuing to evolve and change the universe one moment after another. So that to me is, a, is a, as, as a way of conceiving of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be in full control and He in fact evolves and changes things. So Darwin looked at the common observation that things are changing and he, he used that to speak of natural selection. You should understand what he means by that. He's saying that nature selects what is going to survive in the next generation. As if nature is some person who has this full control. As if nature is God who makes decisions who is going to survive and who is not going to survive. See, this is the way that people have uh, come to speak of things happening without mentioning God. So they say Mother Nature does something. Who is Mother Nature? I'd like to meet her someday. <laughs> So the best way of speaking of this is to say that not that there is natural selection, but that there is divine selection. So think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about the uh, generations gone by whom He have destroyed because they did not listen to His message and He brought another people in their stead. That's evolution. The bad is swept away and a new uh, thing is introduced. With the, with the expectation that there will be some good coming out of this. So, so that's evolution. A, a change in, in the composition of uh, living beings on, on the earth. But it's not by natural selection. It's not the earth decided, oh, let me swallow up these guys here. Uh, it's, it's by divine 
selection. And uh, when we think about things evolu evolving and changing, uh, we, we should uh, understand that everything that we say that Allah does happens through a process. So w when we say, you know, Allah has given me a baby, thank you, Ya Rabb. So we know the mechanism by, how, by, by which babies come into the world. Uh, but, but we don't give credit to the mechanism, we give credit to the one behind everything. The one who controls the universe and evolves it and changes it moment by moment. And who decides what is going to be, that is Allah Azza wa Jal. We apply the mechanism, but our dua is to Him. A farmer plants his seed, but uh, he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the results. So I drink some water and I say, Bismillah and Alhamdulillah. By saying Alhamdulillah, I give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this water. But that doesn't change the fact that there is a whole process through which that water has come here. So when we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us, we're not denying that there can be some process behind that uh, that could be discovered and explained by people who want to study this. Uh, but but be, bear in mind that when we discover that process, we shouldn't exclude the processor. Thank you.